Peace out, Monique. What's up? Welcome to a new quick win on the Ionic Grid. In the past, I got a question about a request regarding a few different elements within the grid to make it really a responsive element that can handle a lot of data, pagination, different elements. So, because you asked for it, here we go. Uh, I got the comments still open, uh, so the uh, person asking for this was looking for an advanced grid functions, columns must be sortable, some color in uh, different rows, data can be filtered, okay, I think we will leave this out, we will have checkboxes as well, and we will also have pagination. So we will go through most of this and hopefully the rest becomes obvious as well. I have started so far a blank new Ionic application and I included the HTTP client module in our app module. So here we go in the imports because we're going to use the random user API to grab some data within our application. So basically we will have one function to load data and this function will make an HTTP request HTTP get to the random user API and let me bring this in completely so i'm using backticks in order to use the variables directly here in this string make sure you have them like this as well those are not the standard quotes and also not the single quotes these are really the backticks uh, as you can see, I already added two variables in here, which we'll keep in our class. So we will set the initial page to zero and we will set the results count to, uh, let's say 10 in the beginning. So we will assume uh, our paginated API and you could also use your own API. Sometimes your API already returns uh, how many pages are available. In our case, uh, we don't get this result as they are, I think, basically infinite pages. So we will set the amount of total pages to 10. You might do this, as I said, uh, after your first initial API call. So with this data, let's uh, log it out because why not? And then we know that we will have some kind of data array inside our application. And oh, that is interesting. Um, this data is equal to uh, the results uh, key as far as I know. So if we refresh the application and also include the load data call in our constructor, we should see that we're able to get some initial data. Here we go, here are the results, and here's all the information. So now we're gonna build an ion grid view uh, with all this information. So let's start with the header row. I will actually import the header row because that's kind of boring. Um, as well, uh, we will have a bulk edit that was a request as well. So should I remove it? Should I edit? Mm, I will edit. So bulk edit in the beginning false as well. And then we got a sort by, we'll just go through a few of these uh, and then look at it in detail when we have removed all the issues. So sort direction will also be used for sorting our data and that's it so far so what we got is a simple row uh, with columns the select column will only be shown uh, when we're enable bulk edit um, so let's add buttons to enable bulk edit as well and also to delete them but we will implement that functionality later just add the empty functions for now so we can then uh, implement them in a second as well. There we go. So now they should be fine. Also um, for the email column, I already added a click function so we can sort by email later and also added an arrow depending on the sort direction. So usually you know you can uh, click on the columns that you want to sort in applications and then uh, you get a little arrow up, down and then back again. So that's exactly the behavior we want to do in here. Also um, to all of our other columns, the default size here is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, so we get to 12 
and action or select is shown uh, depending on bulk edit. So normally we see the action column at the end, but once we click bulk edit, we should see the select row and then display little checkboxes. Now what I did as well here is um, making this already a bit responsive because if we give two, uh, the size of two to each and every column, um, that will look kind of odd. Let's actually do this for a second. Um, I will just remove this and set the size to two and remove this and remove that just to give you an uh, impression. So now each and every column has the size of two and the problem is once the screen gets smaller and we will see some data in here, this becomes really crowded. So what we can do is based on uh, the width of our screen, hide different columns or give them a different size. So what I did, and let's add this again, is start by hiding the login column uh, on every screen that is smaller than the MD breakpoint and hide the phone on every uh, view width that is lower than the LG. That means once we start with a big screen, and let's save this as well, the first thing that should disappear is the phone column. So let's see, we make this a bit smaller and at some point phone is gone where it previously was. Of course, we then need to uh, give that space to other columns and the same now for login, which will be hidden at another breakpoint. So when we make the view a bit smaller, login is as well hidden. I will just give it to email as you can see right here. So usually, uh, on LG and up, this size will be two, on MD it will be four, and otherwise it will be six. So basically, the, the smaller the screen width becomes, the bigger the email column will get. You could also distribute it to the other columns, however you wanna do it. Uh, for example, perhaps, uh, oh, this will be tricky now, let's just keep it like this. But you can play around with this really a lot. Uh, I used this on the Ionic jobs page as well. Um, so for example, on bigger screens, you see all the data. And once you get smaller, I change a lot of the elements. And once we get to a mobile view, I think, yeah, I actually hide this view button since you are used to tapping the row. And now I hide the date as well. So you can really do a lot uh, of different things that I you, that you might be used to from Bootstrap um, as well with Ionic. But that is of course only our header column. Let's also show our um, data. So um, there are different packages. I used I think an Angular data table package in the past, but it turns out we can uh, really just do this our own as well. So let's iterate over the data, let row of data, and let's also keep track of the index for later. There we got our row. And now we can basically use the same column setup like we have in here. So let's copy this because of course the data columns need to be the same uh, like the header column. Of course, then we got here email and we don't need tappable in here. Uh, login first name, that can basically stay the same. So here we got row email. Um, the login is hidden in, I think, login username. Well, the login is actually uh, an object. Uh, then we got first name, I think that's in name.first and the last name should be in name.last. Then we got phone, which is I think at the top level. So row.phone. And of course, uh, you can simply check out the result as well. So email, phone, login, username and name first, last. So I just need to access the right keys at the right position. Uh, in terms of the action, we will implement something as well. Let's see how our view looks like right now. Okay, it looks, I would say, okay so far. And if we make the screen bigger, we also see the phone number. And as the screen gets smaller, phone disappears and login disappears as well. And then we only got these items left. If we press bulk edit, um, we haven't implemented the function yet. So. 
uh, for the action row, sometimes you need different actions on the user objects like call or whatever. I will just implement a little uh, remove in there. So we can um, call a remove row function to remove a specific item at an index. So that's why we kept the index with our data at the top. And in terms of JavaScript, this looks still pretty boring inside our class. Uh, not a lot of going on, but um, do we want to do this first? Yeah, let's do this first. So um, to remove a row, that's actually kind of easy. We just call this data splice with the index and we want to remove one item. That's everything we got to do if we want to remove a row from our list. So there you see, I can remove different rows. Um, perhaps we also want to make this look a bit better. Uh, and it turns out I haven't actually added my code for this. Well, I will get to this anyway. Let's add a header row class. So header row, uh, font weight, perhaps 500 and border bottom, two pixels, solid black. That's the header row. And I think the other rows also need a class. Um, maybe we just call them um, data row. Yeah, sounds good. So for the data row, uh, what would be a good styling? Maybe just a, a border bottom of one pixel. And then it should already look a bit more like a table. Yeah, at least a bit more structured, I would say. So what do we got as well? We got a bulk delete and a toggle bulk edit and a sort by. Hmm, a lot of things going on that we still need to implement. Let's start with a sort by. So whenever we press the email column, which is just for this example, the only one I added this sort by functionality, um, we will sort either this scanning, S scanning, or put it back to normal. So zero means normal sort direction, but if um, now in here, let's first of all set our sort key to the key and we don't have a sort key. You see, uh, there are a few different states that you really need to manage and variables if you want to build a data table like this um, on your own. It's still possible, but you still need to keep track of a few different elements. And once your requirements get bigger, you will see your class will become really a mess. So um, we will keep the sort key stored and we want to increase our sort direction and then call another function because uh, we will basically sort on these values uh, in, in order to also call the sort whenever we load data. Since um, you click a sort and you go to the next page, perhaps you still want to keep the sorted. So we can then just sort based on these values. I hope that makes sense for you. So within the sort, um, there are two, uh, three cases. We got the uh, sort direction, hello, sort direction equals one. Um, then we got else if sort direction two, and then we got zero, or we got actually uh, bigger than three. So we start with zero, not showing any sorting. Then we will increase it to one and get into the first sorting. We increase it to two, get into the second sorting, and then we set back the sort to zero. Uh, once again, in the end, just to have this loop between zero, one, and two. Really, that's like the, the most easiest way I came up with um, in my mind while creating this tutorial. So we just need to implement the sort for uh, these two cases now. And apparently we can just use the TypeScript or JavaScript sort on our array. In order to implement this, usually um, you just check the value, but uh, we need to get the uh, item at an array because Right in here, let's lock this out to make this a bit clearer. A is an object. So if you call the sort function, A and B will both be objects uh, containing all of the information. I press this. 
you see a is this full object and we can't just compare a to b that wouldn't work we need to extract the key that we really want to compare and that is the sort key we set so we set it to email in this case and you could for example implement it for the other rows as well and then you can really compare the value of a and b using the local comparer which is just a string compare between these and in order to make this in the different or the opposite direction, you can just exchange A and B in here, which returns the other way around. Now, if you go ahead and check this out, we should see that now is E, F, L, that looks fine. Other way around, once again like this, and going back to normal, actually not going back to normal, but it will just keep the data for now. Uh, you could keep the initial sort and then do it again, but well, it won't hurt to keep them sorted like they are now. So we got the sort, we got a list, uh, we wanted to have bulk edit, we want to have pagination, a lot of requirements in the comment. So great comment with in detail explanation on what I should create. Now, if we turn on bulk edit, we want to show the checkboxes at the first spot and hide the action row. Uh, right now, once we click on toggle bulk edit, we should actually enable bulk edit. So do we have a variable already? Yes, we do. So let's just change bulk edit to not bulk edit. I don't know where the U is always coming from. And then also um, we need to keep track of the changes and the rows we marked. So we're going to create another where variable, uh, which will be an empty object. And whenever we toggle the bulk edit, we will also set this object back to an empty object. Now, because we already implemented the rows and the ng if, we should be able to see the select row, which we can toggle, but we don't have a uh, checkbox in here yet. Therefore, let's move back to our homepage and find the spot that we left open within here. So this column is shown once we have the bulk edit enabled. And in here we just add an ion checkbox. And now it's important to connect it to the right ng model. And the right ng model is now um, our edit at this key. So we're using the index, which will basically write uh, the edit like uh, one true, if you enable it, five true, or if you change it back, you will have five faults. This helps so we can later just reduce this to the um, keys that are true and then remove all the items from the array at those positions. So ion checkbox um, should be fine already. And we can also um, lock out what we wanted. Yeah, kind of like this, but not in quotes. <laughs> okay. So Ionic Jobs, goodbye. Um, bulk edit, we select one, three, uh, this one. And when we hit our uh, delete, we see that we should delete zero, two, and four. I could now also add another one and we get a nine as well. If I remove it, oops, yeah, I messed this up. Uh, seven, eight, nine. And now nine is false. So we should emit or omit the nine now and only remove seven and eight. But that shouldn't be a problem for us. We are a JavaScript pro, right? So bulk edit it is const to delete um, object dot keys to first of all get all of our keys. Um, maybe we'll do this really. Uh, one step at a time. So to delete now looks already a bit different. This will give us an array one, three, and an array of zero and two. All right, I just had to I just figured this out while while going through the tutorial. So uh, the to to delete will actually give us all the uh, elements first of all. So if I select one and two, uh, it will always give me one and two. And now if I remove the second one, it will also work because now I have all the keys that were added to this edit. 
and then I can go over the keys with the uh, filter function and check if they are actually true because if they are false in our uh, object that we created then we uh, want to skip them. So now I have this really delete and with this really delete I can really delete uh, the items that I wanted to delete. So I don't really use the, the while loop uh, very often but I found that this works for some reason the best. So just like we do with our uh, splice to remove one row, we can now use it in here and we can use to delete pop, which basically pops the last element from our to delete array. What we note now as well is uh, blah, 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 that we pass in a string instead of a number. We know that these are the keys are numbers, but JavaScript don't know uh, or doesn't know about this yet. So we will add another map block just to make sure every key is understood as a number uh, and also use really delete not just the other one. So by writing plus key you basically transform a string to a number in JavaScript. And now once this is done we can also toggle our bulk edit once again because it will remove the data and then we can hide the row again and reset the object. So let's see, bulk edit, uh, I'm remove the first and last. So now the first should be Alejandra and the last should be Naomi. And Alejandra and Naomi are still in my list. Also, if I select two and then I'll get rid of this, uh, the NHMD should be removed and that's actually the case. So now we've built a great checkboxes uh, bulk delete functionality for our application. We can also get rid of single rows. We can sort them. And now finally, uh, we want to add pagination to this. Um, let's also remove some locks and then we go back. Because for the pagination, we need a few additional helping functions. I will just add them to the bottom. What we need is we want to do a next page and previous page, go first and go last. So the standard items that I uh, that you're used to from pagination. This will simply increase the page by one. This will decrease it. This will go to our uh, first page and this will go to the last page. Again, the amount of total pages on your API may vary and usually a good API that is paginated will also uh, return in every response how many results they are, how many pages based on the current uh, result count. So um, for example, right here we would get for page 0 10 results in the beginning. That's just how we set it up. We could also add another change or another select so we can uh, select 25 or 50 results count. Um, that is the usual behavior you see in a lot of applications. And with these helper functions in place, we can now go back to our home page and somewhere below add another row to uh, actually use these. Because it's kind of boring, I will bring in a bit of the code. First of all, a bit uh, to show on which page we are currently at. And then another row that is a bit bigger. So there we go. And uh, let's check it out. There is the row. We got the go first and previous page in the first half of the row. Um, nothing special in here, really just the icons and go first and pref. And if you go to the second part, you will see here's the same for next page and go last once again. In between these uh, columns, we also got another bigger column that uses an ion select because what I said before, most of the time you can really change the results count. And whenever we change this, we will trigger our load data. It is connected with the ng model to our results count, which is used in the load data. Oh, can I just please just go there? Open it. Come on. <sighs> Whatever. There we see the results count in our HTTP call. So the ion select changes the result count and then triggers the load data, which will use the new value. Um, I think that's basically all for this row. Um, let's see how it looks. So we see page one of 10 because we define there are just 10 pages. 
We can go to the next page, which will make another request. We're now on page two. We are on page one actually, but for the regular user, we of course display it as two. We could also go to page 10 or back to page one. And right now you see we got 10 results, but we could change this to be 25. And then the whole page would look differently. And also for every other page that we request, because we have set the results count to 25, we would now get 25 results. And of course, uh, 50 also works with the API. So we can increase the view, get rid of our debugging view. And then we got a nice big list with bulk edit for user data. We could style this uh, a lot more. Uh, we got pagination at the bottom. So really a responsive data table only with Ionic and Grid. I hope this answered the question that initially came up about the Ionic Grid. You don't really have to use any package. You can really do most of this with the standard functions that are available. Just make sure your rows are set up correctly where the columns are coming to a size of 12 together. Um, make sure that you hide certain rows on specific breakpoints in order to match the layout for smaller and also for bigger screens. Um, you can use ng if inside those rows. And I actually forgot that we want to do one more thing. Huh? Uh, we forgot about the styling. So uh, let's do a styling based on female and male. So let's use for female uh, background. Um, I don't know, ion, color, whatever, danger. And for male, ion, color, success, whatever. Uh, and then use this with ng class on our data row. So ng class will be used like this. Row gender is actually already male or female. Uh, it's a nice coincidence that we can use the the value of row gender as the class for the name. That might not always be the case for you, but in our case, we're lucky and it works. So these seem to be female persons and these seem to be male persons. Now, combine everything I said before with this addition and we have a great data table with Ionic. If you got more questions like these or uh, other requests, you see, I answer to the community. So please always let me know if there's something you would like to see inside a video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins, and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.